Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And uh, something I ran across yesterday, and uh, just seems like one insight, one revelation after another just keeps coming to me as we started in uh, what's seemingly becoming a series on these uh, biblical prophecies that have been fulfilled. And uh, this one here from Joel chapter 1, and I was just blown away. I don't even remember how I ended up over in Joel, but I did. And as I went into Joel, I began to realize that Joel is, um, Joel is actually speaking, in my opinion, about the rejection of Jesus Christ by Israel. Uh, let's go into this. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it. Let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left has the locust eaten, and that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left, the caterpillar has eaten, or the caterpillar eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the, well, they put in here the sweet wine. It's actually the word asis is juicy. It's like a juicy wine or a new wine, as it's put in King James. For it is cut off from your mouth. And that's right there is where we're going to begin at. I want to start breaking some things down as we read this. And then we're going to go through each one step by step here. The, mainly, well, maybe I should say, let's, let's deal first with the palmer worm, the, the canker worm, and the, and the caterpillar. Uh, these are different types of, of uh, bugs there. And it appears to be that what we're looking at here, like in the case of Amos, we have here... Uh, Amos chapter, let me look at the chapter real quick here with you. Chapter 4. I have smitten you with the blasting and mildew, the, mul and, uh, the multitude of your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees have the palmer worm devoured. Yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence in the way of Egypt. By the way, that's the canker worm. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have carried away your, your horses. And I've made the stench of your camp to come up even into your nostrils, yet you have not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as a brand plucked out of the burning, yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus will I do unto you, Israel, because I will do this unto thee. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. And even though the third worm is not mentioned as he talks about overthrowing them, some of, he says, I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were a brand plucked out of the burning, and yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. Then he says, Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. And it's just very interesting, especially verse 12, prepare to meet your God in light of Joel's prophecy, because as I mentioned to you, and it seems that to me as we're looking over here in the book of Amos, that Amos is also referring to the same event. The only difference is, is Joel is going to go into what is actually happening. So we see, without the mentioning of the caterpillar, we see the first two worms, the palmer worm and the canker worm, because the canker worm is what, was, what uh, happened down in Egypt. But yet, in this case, we know that happened to the Egyptians, but yet God is showing that he also allowed that to happen uh, he says, I have sent among you the pestilence in the way of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and carried away with your horses. And I have made the stench of your camp to come up even into your nostrils. Yet, have I, yet you have not returned unto me, says the Lord. Interesting. 
Now, he doesn't mention the worm in there like he did up here, the palma worm, as he talks about in the first part here. But I just find that kind of fascinating. Let's go on there. Like I said, Awake, you drunkards, and weep and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet wine or the new wine. Because of this, uh, before it is cut off from your mouth. For a people has come up upon my land, mighty and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the jaw teeth of a lioness. He hath laid my vine waste and blasted my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it down, and the branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin gird with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meal offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn, even the Lord's ministers. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ashamed, O you husbandmen, well of you vine dressers, for what for, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is withered, and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, also and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. For joy has withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, you priest. Wail, you ministers of the altar. Come lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God. For the meal offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify you a fast and call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. As a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the food cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The grain shrivel under their hoes, and the garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down. The corn is withered. How do the beasts groan, and the herds of the cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture? Yea, the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. And to thee, O Lord, do I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath set ablaze all the trees of the field. Yea, the beasts of the field pant unto thee, for the water brooks are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. And you have just looked at everything that takes place as a result of the rejection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's exactly what I see. Let's take a look at where we're, when we see these things. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and well, you drinkers of wine, because of, the, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. Isaiah 56. This, as I mentioned the other day, Yehuda had quoted, um, I think that's where we're at, yeah, Isaiah 56. Thus saith the Lord, keep, the, keep you justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is near to come and my favor to be revealed. That was speaking of the coming of Jesus Christ. Go down to verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be acceptable upon, upon my altar. For my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Saith the Lord God who gathered the dispersed of Israel. Yet I will gather others to, uh, to him beside those of him that are gathered. And we know that according to Acts, uh, the house of Israel did come home. Acts chapter 2, verse 36, when Peter said, Be it known unto you, O house of Israel, this same Jesus whom you've crucified has been made both Lord and Christ. Not only that, we also have um, that they brought the proselytes with them. Yeah, yet will I gather others to him beside those of him that are gathered. His watchmen, watch as all ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all the beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind without knowledge. They are all dumb dogs. Those that are supposed to have a care and recognize the coming of the Messiah, we find out Isaiah says that the watchmen are blind. Jesus even said, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in a ditch. They're all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, raving, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, the dogs are greedy. They know not when they have enough. And these are shepherds that cannot understand. They all turn to their own way, each one to his own gain. One and all come ye. I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. They didn't believe that anything would happen. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. 
and now they go to becoming a bunch of drunkards. As does, says the scripture, you drunkards and weep and well, all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. That new wine is Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the law of love within the human heart and not on a letter on a table of stone. For a people has come upon my land mighty and without number. That's, the, that's what happened after they rejected Christ. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the jaw teeth of a lioness. He hath laid my vine waste, blasted my fig tree. Remember what Jesus said there? Hmm. Uh, I'm in the wrong one. Let's see here. In the book of Matthew chapter 21, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said to, unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? See, that's what happened with Israel. Israel is a type of the fig tree. Jesus came, there was no fruit on it. And we find that Joel also speaks of that. He hath laid my vine waste and blasted my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it down, and branches thereof are made white. Think about it. Think what Jesus did, and then think about that. Lament like a virgin, gird with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Paul said, I've espoused you a chaste virgin to Jesus Christ. The meal offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn, even the Lord's ministers. What do we have there? <clears throat> now we have here, Matthew chapter 26, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man had he not been born, right? Now he goes on, Then Judas which betrayed him answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, you have said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat this as my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Now we know the rest of the story though. He's taken out, falsely accused, judged, and murdered. Pilate sanctioning his death. But it was the Pharisees that called on Israel to call for his death. Death. He hath laid my vine waste, right? A lament like a virgin gird with sackcloth for the husband of her youth, the meal offering and the drink offering. There it was. When they did the communion, he was offering both the meal and the drink offering and it is cut off from the house of the Lord. Why? Because he said, this is my body. He said, this is my blood. And once he was offered, it was cut off. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Interesting, isn't it? Be ashamed, O you husbandmen, and well, you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. It's the death of Jesus Christ. See, notice he says, to them, be ashamed. Because they killed him. The vine is withered and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered for joy is withered away from the sons of men. Remember what he said, and I don't know if I have this scripture up or not. Their joy shall be turned into mourning. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, here we go right here. In chapter 9 of Matthew, Jesus said to them, Can the children of the bride, bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them. Then shall they fast. 
then shall they mourn as well. And they did. Going back over here to Joel. Sanctify you a fast and call a solemn, solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of your land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas, alas, the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the food cut off before our eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God? Because, like I said, he was cut off. The flocks of the sheep are made desolate. Remember that right there? How do the beasts groan? The herds of the cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of the sheep are desolate. Let's see. Jesus says here, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives and said, Jesus unto them. We're over here in Matthew 26. All you shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. No wonder why he says the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. Unto thee, O Lord, do I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath set ablaze all the trees of the field. Yea, the beasts of the field pant unto thee, for water brooks are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. But thankfully, there is a fountain that is open. As that old song goes, drawing from Emmanuel's veins. He is the water of life. As he told the woman, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you'd ask me for a drink. I'd give you water that you wouldn't have to come to this well. It'd be flowing from within you. This chapter, as simple as it is, has totally blown me away. And I believe every bit of it was prophetic of what happened to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.